Good morning, I'm Riccardo. In this video, we will show how to use the PLC functionality integrated in Mitsubishi electric inverters. Initially, you will see the overview of the inverters that support the functionality of the integrated PLC. We will continue with the parameter setting and the preliminary phase that allow you to activate this functionality. Then, the two methods of programming the PLC logic will be shown, which are using the special relays or the special register with the related practical example. Finally, a brief mention of a more advanced application example to show the potential of the integrated PLC. This slide shows the models that support the functionality of the integrated PLC with some of the main features summarized in the table. You can see the difference in available memory, which is greater in the A800 and F800 inverters, and instead the possibility in the E800 to write code also in structured tests, not available in the other models. Just like a real PLC, here too you have the bit memory areas, M, the timers and retentive timers, the counters and data registers, D, the word memory areas. The L, latch memory areas, the retentive ones, are not present, but we will see later that it will be possible to get around this limit using inverter parameters left available to the users. Below are the advantages of having a PLC integrated into an inverter. The inverter becomes a smarter device, allowing us to create custom logic. In addition, you have a more compact and less expensive hardware configuration, eliminating the need for an external PLC for many applications. At the bottom right, we find the block diagram of the inverter operation, where the inputs and outputs can be read or written by accessing with the special relays or with the special registers. Finally, the software tool that we will use to program the inverter PLC is the FR Configurator 2 developer. But first, let's see how to activate this functionality of the PLC starting from an empty project. So let's start by opening a new project. I'm connected to the inverter by USB and proceed by performing automatic recognition. We can end the search as the device has already been found. Let's go online and the first fundamental operation that we must perform is to set the sequence start bit S2 in one of the physical inputs present in the terminal block with the relative electrical connection. The second operation that will allow us to activate the PLC is to write the value 2 in parameter 414. By opening the I.O. terminal monitor, it's possible to monitor the status of the sequence start bit. To make the changes effective, we reset the inverter. If the procedure was successful, the PRAN status LED on the front panel of the inverter must be on. Now, by clicking on Tool and Developer, we open a new project to write the PLC logic, and in this case, we select the ladder. The special relays represent one of the two methods available to program the PLC. Each of these system memories corresponds to a specific function 
already predefined within the PLC. The table below shows only an extract of all the available memory. By consulting the manual, you can find the complete list. So you can see how the first SM in the table corresponds to the forward command, the second SM to the reverse command, while the subsequent memories are used to write an operating frequency to the inverter. Let's now see a practical example of using the special relay. First of all, we need to enable the inverter control with this first instruction, which must always be present, both in the case of special relays and special registers. Next, we will use the M0 memory to select the type of control you want to use. If the SM1255 is off, then the special relays will be active. Otherwise, if the SM1255 is on, the special registers will be active. At this point, we can see how to write a frequency to the inverter via the special relays. So with the M1, we command the inverter in forward to the RM frequency. Another example, with the M2, we command the inverter in reverse to the RH frequency. Let's now download the project. And let's test what has been written. You can see the PLC cycle time. Now there is no command.
By changing the value of M1, we will see that the inverter will start at the default frequency for AM and we verify it. Similarly, by changing the value of M2, we will see that the inverter will start at the default frequency for RH. The special registers represent the second method available to program the PLC. Unlike the special relays, here the SIM register is always used, which is represented by the word SD1148, and through the combination of bits we can obtain multiple functions. So in the case of the E800 inverter, for example, if I wanted the forward command at the RM speed, I would have to write in hexadecimal H9. Now let's proceed by creating in our project the same commands that were made with the special relays but using the special register. We use the M3 memory to command H9 in SD1148, which we said corresponds to the forward command at the RM frequency. Instead, we use the M4 memory to command H6 in SD1148, which we said corresponds to the reverse command at the RH frequency. Let's download the project and let's test what we wrote. First of all, we will use the M0 memory to enable the control with the special registers, so the SM1255 must be on. By changing the value of M3, we will see that the inverter will start at the default frequency for RM and we verify it. Similarly, 
Similarly, by changing the value of M4, we will see that the inverter will start at the default frequency for RH. One more time with M3 and the frequency of the inverter returns to 30 Hz. Before concluding, I wanted to show a more advanced application example to give an idea of the potential of the integrated PLC. Here the parameters available to the user have been used to create different functions. Parameter 1170 allows you to select the machine cycle between the standard one in the graph above and the one with the reversal of direction at the bottom. The various parameters for the programmable timers, which in addition to being retentive, and therefore in the event of a stoppage of direction, they resume from the stored value also allow the user to decide the time interval at constant frequency. Parameter 1171 allows you to select the cycle execution mode. If it's zero, it's executed only once. If it's one, it's executed in loop mode. Now let's go and see the program code. There is a section dedicated to speed management with the different frequency assignments. A section reserved for the management of retentive timers. One dedicated to the automatic cycle. And then we find the standard cycle shown before in the graph, created with the relative state machine. And finally, the one with the reversal of direction. In conclusion, we have seen that thanks to the internal PLC of this inverter, we can create simple instructions such as writing a speed, but also a program to manage more complex applications.